Hi, I'm Alan McKay, and I wanted to quickly build this video, which was about the evolution of your reel. So I think a lot of us have the misunderstanding that, you know, we're going to build out a reel when we first get started, and we're going to, you know, update it with all of our latest work as we go through. And for me, I didn't want this to be something that's too overcomplicated or anything like that, but I basically just wanted to talk about the types of reels that you're going to have over your career. Because initially we start out with a student reel and then we're going to get into a generalist reel and we kind of build it out from there. But they all have a different purpose and I think that that's the important thing as we get into this is understanding um, what each one is for and when to use it and, and just understanding like that there are different types out there as we continue down our career. So. As we go through this, I'm just gonna quickly, I'm gonna try and make this a short video and try and get to everything as quick as I can. But in the beginning, we all start out with a student reel, okay? This is the one that is gonna land us our first job. And usually it's gonna be the one that's all of our personal work. It's, it's rarely ever a team collaboration, but it's something that is able to emphasize that uh, we have potential, please hire us. Now, there's a lot of rules around like what to put on a reel, you know, you know, start with your best shot, keep it tight, all of these different things. If you're interested, I have my ultimate demo reel book that I've written and it's available on Amazon for about $20 and Audible is an audio book for about $35. You can get it free on my website at alamckay.com slash myreel if you wanna get access to that as well. So that goes through a lot of the recipe of how to build the perfect reel that will land you the right job. And it's from the perspective of someone actually does the hiring uh, rather than being from someone who is either a journalist or is an artist who assumes what might go on. I'm actually someone who hires uh, people and builds teams for a living. So I definitely have a lot of experience in this area. But that being said, your reel in the beginning is definitely one that's always going to be crude. It's going to look terrible, but you want to keep it as short as possible and just showcase those couple of shots that are going to give you uh, the opportunity. So don't make it too long. Uh, don't make it too convoluted and just kind of focus on being able to prove the one thing that you just want to prove that you can sit down tomorrow at a desk and be able to do the work. That's the only thing that's important with your student reel is to be able to showcase that you're the right person for the job, that you could sit down tomorrow and do the job. Now, at the same time, when I say a student reel, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily a student. It can also mean that you're 40 years old and you want to transition your career. Uh, I've tested uh, now tens of thousands of people about like where they're at in their career. And it's very common for a lot of us to be in a different industry and we want to get into games. We want to get into design. We want to get into film. We want to make illustration or art our career, whatever it might be. So it's very common. So when I say your student reel, that can still mean that you're not a student. Okay. Uh, I never went to uh, college for the 3D or anything like that. There was no colleges around when I first got into it. But again, your student reel is just a way of saying your, your first reel. Now, the biggest key thing about your student reel is that when you get that first job, that's when you get your reel and you put it in an archive somewhere and you never touch it ever again. I always say that your first reel should be a throwaway. In other words, you never want this stuff to land on any other reel that you do because your first reel is basically there to get that first job. And then from there, anytime you put stuff from your old reel onto a new reel, all it's going to remind people of is, hey, I'm fairly new in the industry. I don't have enough new content to fill things out. Okay. The other thing I wanted to emphasize, and I've, I've got this in the book as well, about the demo reel myths. Okay. And, and one of the big misunderstandings I keep hearing all the time is that your reel needs to tell a story. And that's so wrong. Your reel needs to demonstrate that you can sit down tomorrow and do the job. That's the only thing that it should be able to do. Now, if you want to be creative, if you want to tell a story, I suggest going and making a short film. Okay, rather than trying to make a short film for a demo reel, do it properly, go get it out there, do the circuits, try and get recognition. The key thing is with your short film, that's something that can get you a lot of recognition, it can get your name out there, and potentially it could allow you to fast track your career. I've got a lot of friends who've won Oscars or other animation awards, things like that from their short films and has jump started their career at Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar. So if you're gonna do it, do it right, make it a short film. You don't need your reel to tell a story. If you are, you might as well go all out. You know, there's not much difference other than one is submitted into all the film circuits, whereas the other one is being submitted directly to studios who aren't looking to hire you to make a short film, okay? So that's the key thing I wanted to bring up is that it might be cute and everything, but you might as well just go all out. Don't just do it on the, on the chance that they might say, well, wow, this person's really creative because they're hiring you typically to do a certain task. So demonstrate that task, focus on that. 
And it's okay to do both, but I'm just saying you don't wanna get distracted by trying to do too much because that's the biggest thing that I see. Again, with student reels, uh, I've had so many times someone ask me for advice, they say, hey, what should I do? And I say, just make one shot, make one really amazing shot because it's all that it takes. Now the one shot can completely blow up and give you all the opportunities, but if you then overcomplicate it with 20 shots or something, you're more than likely not gonna finish. Now on top of that, if you do, it's probably not gonna look that good. So just keep that in mind. And at the same time, like keep it simple. When you're focusing on your reel, it shouldn't be too overcomplicated. Uh, again, uh, I've had some people where they say like, what should I do? I say one shot. Then they're like, well, what if I did like a missile hitting a bridge? I'm like, yes, go do that. They're like, and then it falls in the water and it causes this tsunami and the tsunami hits the city and everything gets destroyed. It's like, no, don't do that. So again, keep it realistic. Try and focus on just something that you can really polish and make amazing rather than trying to make it too complicated, too grandiose, all of those things. Because again, you're probably not going to finish it or you are going to get overwhelmed and uh, the thing's going to get so heavy and slow that you're going to make it look like crap because you've overcomplicated it too much. So think about all these things. Once you get that job, once you get your first job, like I said, your first reel is a throwaway. So when you get into the industry, what you want to do is initially start out um, by typically freelancing commercials if you're going to work in post-production. Uh, I say that because video games, especially AAA video games, the turnaround's about three years typically. And if you're just starting out, you're probably not going to get that much responsibility. Same thing with feature film. Uh, I've had, you know, I've seen people who go on to work on Happy Feet or other movies. They end up doing some snowflakes in the background and that's kind of like all they're going to do for the next three years. So when you have a reel at the end of that three years, you don't really have that much to show for it, nor do you have much experience because you're not exposed to too much. You're kind of put into that, that cog. You're doing that one thing over and over. You're not getting challenged and pushed. Now, let's just say, and you can apply this to whatever industry you're in, but let's just say that you're in visual effects. I'd recommend going into commercials. I'd recommend going to commercials because that way, typically a project might be two weeks to turn around to get onto the next one. So every two or three weeks, you're gonna get a new project, new challenges, new deadlines. You're gonna keep pushing yourself. On top of that, certain studios you go to, you're probably not gonna be doing the same thing every single time. I always recommend starting as a generalist and then specializing later. I have a video on being a specialist or generalist and getting into the whole thing. But more importantly, when you're first starting out, that's the easiest thing to do is to um, initially go to somewhere that you're gonna get given as much challenges as you can or as many challenges as you can and uh, pushed in as, as many directions as you can. The critical thing about that is it allows you to then have the opportunities to do things that you might have been exposed to before. And more importantly, you might have to find something that you're actually really good at that you never would have thought of otherwise. The best part is that it really makes you a more rounded artist. You're able to model, you're able to uh, do animation, you're able to do lighting, rendering, texturing, shaders, all these different things. So the more that you're exposed to all this stuff, the better it's gonna make you as a well-rounded artist. Later, you can specialize. So the cool thing is that, let's say you work two weeks, um, you know, every single project, then what's, there's about 20, 30 commercials you're gonna work on in a year. So either way, if you end up with 15 or 20 projects, even 10 projects, that's plenty of material. That's also plenty of experience that you've gotten rather than doing that one task over and over and over for three years. So usually within the first one or two years of working commercials, you've got enough stuff on your reel that you could then start looking for work um, in a specific discipline if you wanted to do that. Either way, you can cut a new reel and that new reel has got so much new content on there, you start negotiating better money and you can showcase yourself as much stronger artist than you would have if you were to, again, work at a bigger place that has a slower turnaround on projects and less challenges. And the cool thing is on top of all this, it's a fresh new reel with all production work that not only have you touched, but on top of that, you've got a team of professionals. Everyone who's really good at their one thing is all chipping in and perfecting this commercial and making it look amazing. Okay, so compositors, lighters, shading artists, modelers, all of us together are banding together to make these amazing visuals. So your reel is gonna look amazing. That's why your first reel is a throwaway because all it takes is to get a reel and I get them all the time where we'll be looking it over and it looks amazing. It's like cool, 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 cool. And then that one shot that you're so proud of or that people keep mentioning was so cool or you put so much work into it, you deserve to keep it around for another round. Um, all it takes is that one shot from your original reel and then the resume comes out. We always grab the resume and say, oh, wait a minute, how much experience does this person have? Oh, it's their first year. Because that one thing is gonna pull you back to, I don't have that much experience. So your first reel is a throwaway, so that way your next reel is completely polished. It's your first production reel. Okay, so keep that in mind that your first reel outside of your student reel 
is a production reel. And it's entirely production work, okay? So bit by bit, you're gonna go down this evolution, but I think starting as a generalist is always the best way. So that way you're gonna get more exposure to everything, and on top of that, um, you're gonna be a better artist for it, and you're gonna figure out things that you're actually naturally good at along the way too. And better yet, you have a better understanding of how everything works, so that way you can be a better artist um, knowing what you need to deliver to the compositor, knowing what their needs are. Also knowing what to communicate to the modeler, so that way, let's say you're, you're doing effects and you need to destroy a building, you're able to communicate that you need closed surfaces, everything needs to be clean, no, um, you know, no penetrating edges, things like that. So again, the, the more that you understand everything, the better you can function as an artist. Beyond that, you get into being a specialist. And that's typically what most people do. Not everyone does. Some people stay as a generalist and that's completely fine. But if you wanna go specialize, I think it's better because you're able to laser focus down and be able to brand yourself, communicate you know, that one service that you're able to provide. And that way you have a, you know, people have an itch, you're able to scratch it. In other words, people have a need, you're able to say, yeah, I do water effects. And they say, great, we need a water effects person. It's a lot easier to stand out from the crowd than any uh, other way. So this is, in my opinion, the best way to go is to begin to specialize for a while. Um, eventually, you know, your specialist reel is going to be one of those things that bit by bit, you're going to get enough material that you can start saying, hey, I'm doing water effects or I'm doing rigging, whatever it might be. And that reel essentially is able to communicate more laser focused that you're going to be hired for these specific things. Usually it means you can negotiate your money at that point. There's a lot of things you can do, but more importantly, it's going to make you stand out because you're able to have that one thing that you're able to put your hand up and say, this is what I do and I do it really well. So your specialist reel is going to communicate that. It's going to be all just that thing. It doesn't mean you might showcase some other things on top of there, but for the most part, you would start to eliminate all the other production stuff and just focus on sending one message, one communication line that you're doing this one area. Um, so you build a specialist reel from there. A lot of us will go into more of a uh, supervisor role. So usually at that point, five years, 10 years from now, you might become a, a lead in your department. So let's say if you are doing effects, you might become an effects lead. And so you build a, an effects lead reel potentially, uh, or you eventually become a supervisor. You, become, you begin to create a supervisor reel. Now, I will say that for me, uh, I have many different reels, but I typically um, use my effects reel for work because I'm able to communicate what I've actually done myself because I can have a supervisor reel and that's gonna be something that you build over time. So initially when you get a job as a supervisor, it's something that you get knighted into. I get people all the time email me saying, hey, um, you know, can I call myself a technical director? And I'm like, yeah, you can. You can absolutely call yourself a technical director, but you can't call yourself a supervisor because you need someone to give you that opportunity to say, okay, you're now a supervisor. I, I knight thee, you're a supervisor now. So when you officially get the role of being able to supervise something, then from there you try to get more of that work if it's something you enjoy. I've got friends and colleagues that supervise for a bit and they don't enjoy it. They wanna go back to being an artist on the box. And some supervisors are artists on the box too. Um, some people don't like being a supervisor because some studios have policies that supervisors don't get paid on an hourly rate and they don't get double time or, or time and a half either. So there's all these different like pros and cons to being a soup. Um, but if you want to do that, usually you might get a few opportunities to be a supervisor and you can build up your reel over time. But the first few jobs that you get probably aren't going to be, um, you know, enough on your reel to be able to, to have a supervisor reel. Um, so you might be supervising for a lot longer than um, you before you actually end up with a supervisor reel. So just keep that in mind. But eventually you'll have enough work that you can say, all right, this is my supervisor reel and it's typically your work, but also other people's work as well. And this is something that you can say that I managed these artists and I made sure that um, the client, the director, the agency, whoever it was, got what they uh, requested. So so at this point, uh, there's a lot of diff different directions you can take. And I wanna keep this short. I don't want this to be like every single thing that you could do out there. But um, you know, at this point, there are some people who decide either going from CG supervisor to visual effects supervisor, then you might go client side. So in other words, you build a reel out that you go to agencies and you say, hey, um, I, wanna, I want you guys to rep me, represent me, and, um, and try to put me onto different projects. So they'll have your reel and they'll go to producers and directors and say, hey, do you want this visual effects supervisor to work on your movie? And they'll be responsible for handling all of the visual effects facilities. And that's something that I've done a bit in the past. Either your client side or you're working 
for a studio and you're hired by that client side soup. So usually that's what will happen, but that's one direction you can take. And if that's the case, then again, you're building out a reel that um, usually is more of a sample reel. It's something that showcases a huge variety of what you can do rather than it being um, one specific thing. Cause you need, need to be able to show that you've got chops in all the areas that you can um, bring it to the table when it comes to uh, being able to handle a whole production. But the other flip side is that maybe you want to be a studio instead. Maybe you want to own your own company, create your own company and hire other artists. So at that point, uh, you would begin to create a studio reel. And a studio reel is going to showcase um, all the, the services that you want to provide. And this is usually going to be for agencies, for clients, um, you know, less likely for studios, but again, you might want to try and get um, outsource or overflow from other studios as well. And that's a good way to kind of get into feature film is to um, go to certain studios and if they have a couple of shots that are outside of their bandwidth, then they can say, go do this. And eventually you get competent and confident enough doing those that you can start pitching and bidding on feature films yourself. So there's a lot of different opportunities and, um, and things that you can do from here. But the main thing is that your studio reel is going to be much bigger. Um, usually my personal reels are about 60 to 90 seconds. They, you want them to keep short and engaged. You want people to, to be able to say that uh, they saw just enough, not they saw too much. You know, it's okay for them to come back and say, can we see more material? But you don't want to have one or two things on there that was just a little bit too much. And they're like, eh, I'm not as blown away after, you know, I was till I saw that one shot. So it's better to keep it tight and engaging and captivating the entire way through. But when it comes to a studio reel, it's very different because it's more of a sample reel. The amount of times that I send out a reel and then an agency comes back and says, hey, can you do what you did on that part of your reel for us? So it's more to be able to showcase all the things you can do and it's more for them to be able to see that you're the, the obvious expert that they want to hire. Um, but eventually, as a studio, you want to specialize and have very laser-focused reels as well. So eventually you might have a character animation reel, you might have a effects reel, you might even have like a crowds reel, a fire reel, a car reel, a game cinemax reel. All these very specific ones that you can send out that are solely focused on that one Thing for that one client so that way it's super focused and it's able to qualify you above everyone else because theirs might have green screen removal and might have some cartoon stuff and some photo real stuff yours just has that one thing and you're, you're basically saying this is what we do this is what we can do for you and that way it's very captivating it's very laser focused so usually for me uh, I've had a studio reel and then I'll have like multiple um, specialized reels that I'll send out depending on who they are. Again, if it's the right client, I'll go and cut a very specific reel. If I know that they're doing Marvel stuff, then I might try and focus on sci-fi magic, all the things that are more around the superhero kind of effects that they want to see, or if they're doing digital cities, digital doubles, whatever it might be to communicate that again, um, this is what I can do for them. So creating custom reels is another thing on top of the specialist reels. And then you have the broader ones of this is our studio reel. Okay, so you have different ones for different purposes. Um, and you go beyond that even further. But the general thing is that you start as a student, you go generalist, you go specialist, then eventually you can go into supervisor and eventually client side, or you can create your own studio reel, go from there. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing and how you want to approach getting clients. But typically this is how you want to communicate and have that evolution of a reel. I know I kind of plowed through this so quickly, but I wanted to give that bird's eye view, the 30,000 foot view of um, these are the types of reels to think about over your career. Okay, so I hope that helped a lot. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and let me know. Again, I want to engage with everyone as much as I can. Any opinions you want to share, anything like that as well. Um, more importantly, like I said, I kind of just scratched the surface on this, but I want you to start to kind of think about all the requirements that go into this and like where um, you'll eventually take your reel as well as potentially your career as well, because there's definitely different things you want to do. But like I said, this is just the beginning of what you can cover. Uh, if you want to check out the Ultimate Demo Reel book, um, go to almckay.com slash myreel. I'll leave a link in the show notes. But uh, they, you know, everything's explained much more thoroughly and in depth. But this is a chance, like I said, to just kind of communicate uh, a bird's eye view of what to expect going in. Okay, so subscribe below if you want to get more videos. I've got a lot coming up specifically around the subject as well as other areas too. So definitely if uh, you want to get more videos, subscribe below, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you and always hit that like button too. Thanks again. I appreciate your time and hopefully you found this valuable. Okay, rock on. Oh.